Welcome back to another episode of the Triple P, Patty's PE Podcast. This is Immaculate Day outside here on the 24th of April in 2043. On the podcast today, we're going to have a guest speaker. He brings us information on why physical activity is not physical education, like your school administration wants you to believe. With me today, I have Bryson Davis. He's the current National Physical Education Teacher of the Year. Tell us a little bit about your background and why you're here today, Bryson. Well, sir, Pat, I just want to thank you for the opportunity of being on your show today. I'm sure excited to be here. Um, I've been teaching high school PE for 20 years in a small town called Craig, Colorado. I graduated from the University of Northern Colorado, best school in the nation, class of 2023. Whoop, whoop. Today, I'm here to bring awareness of why physical activity is not physical education. All right. Well, so to start off, Right now, I'm looking at the Colorado standards, standards for Physical Education, and it states here that elementary students are only to require to fulfill 150 minutes of physical activity per week. Why is this not enough? Well, to start off, the first thing that, I, that is wrong with this is that it requires physical activity, not physical education. While I agree that students need this time to be active, the difference between physical education and activity is that physical education teachers teaches students how to be physically literate and promotes healthy habits that they can continue to use throughout their entire life in various ways. So by just making students complete physical activity instead of physical education, they are depriving these students of knowledge that will be beneficial them for life no matter what career path they choose. So to build on that then, you mentioned a couple times about physical education, and then you mentioned about being physically literate. So what else goes into physical education besides being physical literate? Is there standards or guidelines that you or any other teacher can follow? Sir Patty, this is a great question. There are standards in which PE teachers follow to help create these physical literate individuals. I personally reference the Shape America standards to help guide me in various activities and lessons that I perform in my classroom. To tie this back into your earlier question, according to Shape America, Standard 3 states that the physical literate individual demonstrates the knowledge and skills to achieve and maintain a healthy enhancing level of physical activity and fitness. This shows that requiring physical education over physical activity, the students will still get their physical activity not with the knowledge of how to remain physically active for a lifetime. So... With all that being said, can you explain to the listeners that we have out there that may not understand why this debate even exists? They think that physical education class is just the teacher going out and rolling the balls and letting the students play with no lesson behind it and the kids are just out there running around. Why is physical education so important and why are people like me and you out there advocating for it so much? Sir Patty, you bring up an alarming question, and part of the reason I'm here today is to help educate those who may not know why a simple subject such as physical education is important for children and their overall lifestyle. According to the state of Colorado, children ages 2 to 14 had a 26.5 overweight or obese rating. Being formerly obese, my quality of life was poor throughout my childhood. I struggled to do various physical activities with my friends because my weight was such an issue, and that is the reasoning behind why I chose the profession of being a physical educator. So I can help students that were like me and educate them on proper physical techniques and nutrition they need in order to live a health-enhancing life and not miss out on the fun activities. I know these students are out there because according to the state of Colorado, 3% of obese children struggle with emotion, concentration, behavior, and getting along with others. There are also health implications of obesity in children. In the Bogalosa Heart Study, 70% of obese, ch obese children have at least one cardiovascular disease risk factor, and 39% of that had two or more. Those are some powerful words coming from Bryson right there. And I don't know about the listeners out there, but that caught me right in the feels. You can see your motivation your determination to educate the kids out there and to give them physical education and not physical activity, which does not surprise me why you won the National Physical Educator of the Year. Is there anything else out there you want the listeners to hear before you sign off? 
Well, Sir Patty, like I always tell the students in my classroom, physical activity is nothing without physical education. Well, there you go, everyone. Bryson Davis for you right there, the National Physical Educator of the Year. I hope you listen to his words and gather their meanings because they sure are powerful. With all this being said, if you want to be an engaged audience member or herd member of your community, do some research on physical education. Don't take what you hear here as your only source. Make sure you go look up places like Shape America or your state or district physical education requirements. Take that information to events such as PTA meetings or school board meetings and let your opinion on physical education be heard. That's going to do it for today's episode. I sure hope you guys all enjoy the guest speaker. I'll catch you on the next episode of Triple P. And as always, stay fit.